Hi, my name is Abram, aka Stitches, and this is my SysFizz Exam 3 extra credit video. Let's go, let's dive right into it. Woo! First off, we got some fun dimensional concepts. Let's start with anatomy. Your thoracic cavity is in the inside of your chest, where your two lungs are. Your thoracic cavity is made up of two parts, the chest wall and your lungs. Both parts have elastic recoil in opposite directions, kind of like the recoil of gun. <laughs> At most volumes, the chest wall tends to expand, while the lungs always tend to collapse. Between your lungs and the chest wall exists a fluid-filled space called the pleural cavity. Think of a balloon blown up inside another balloon. The space between those balloons is analogous to the intrapleural space. The pleural space is special because it provides lubrication as the lung moves against the chest wall during breathing. The fluid in this space also provides a surface tension to keep the lungs in contact with the chest wall, making sure that as the chest expands and collapses, the lungs expands and collapses with it. A real life analogy is two plates of glass with a water layer between them. They're easy to slide back and forth, but extremely difficult to pull apart. The force in this pleural space resisting the pulling apart creates a negative pressure relative to the atmosphere. Speaking of pressures, let's talk about lung pressures. See right there, the force from the negative pressure pulls in the lungs and the chest wall. The pressure gradient from inside the lungs to the pleural cavity is called the transpulmonary pressure. It helps keep the lungs expanding. Pressure in the lungs is called alveolar pressure, PA. Pressure in the pleural space is called PPL. Since the pleural pressure is negative and the alveolar pressure is positive, the, subtract the difference between the two is always positive, which means the force of pressure is always in the direction that expands the lungs. Next up, compliance. Compliance is the change of volume of a container divided by the change in pressure. This is the inverse of elastins and a measure of focus, focus, and a measure of distance ability. In a pressure volume graph of the thoracic cavity, it's the slope. The dark line is the compliance of the combined chest wall and lungs, while the upper dotted line is the compliance of just the chest wall. The arrows represent the force direction of elastic recoil. The lungs collapse inward, while the chest usually expands outward. Let's take a look at a clinical application. Pneumothorax is a condition where the surface tension of the pleural space breaks and the lungs separate from the chest wall. This is typically caused by a chest wall puncture, but in some cases the lung can also spontaneously separate with a cough. This happened to one of my buddies in high school, and I made fun of him for it. Let's stick with the puncture case. The reason the lung is unable to reattach to the chest wall is because the pleural space pressure equilibrates with the ambient barometric pressure through the air leak from the puncture. Since both the alveolar pressure and the pleural pressure are the same as barometric pressure, which we said is zero millimeters of mercury, the difference between the two is zero. Without a positive difference or transpulmonary pressure, and without surface tension to maintain the negative pressure in the pleural space, there's a force to hold the lungs open. The most common treatment for pneumothorax is needle aspiration or chest tube insertion. Both of these treatments are essentially poking through the chest wall to suck out the offending air or fluid that leaked through to help relieve the compression on the lungs and to seal the air leak, allowing the lung to re-expand. There are alternative treatments as well. You can irritate the tissues around the lung to cause them to stick together, or inject blood into the area and create an autologous blood patch to help seal the leak. Or place a one-way valve in the lung via a bronchoscope that helps the lung reinflate on its own. Terrible problem! A patient experiences a knife sticking out of their chest. They are unable to breathe effectively and diagnosed with the pneumothorax. Using given values in table one, calculate the transpulmonary pressure of a patient and explain why the lung collapses. Then, sketch the compliance curve for the combined chest walls and lung <laughs> for a pneumothorax patient compared to a normal patient. that describe 
the relationships between different lung pressures. In order to find transpulmonary pressure, we need alveolar and pleural pressure. We can see from the diagram that the difference between pleural pressure and ambient barometric pressure, or PB, is equal to the chest wall pressure. Thus, we can rearrange that equation and solve for the pleural pressure, which we find to be zero. Since PA, or alveolar pressure, is also zero, when we calculate the difference between the two to find transpulmonary pressure, we find it to be zero millimeters of mercury. This makes sense because it explains why the patient can't breathe well. Their lungs don't have a positive pressure force to help them expand. For chest compliance, let's refer to the original diagram found in the previous slides. When the lungs are separated from the chest wall like a pneumothorax, the compliance curve becomes more like the chest wall's compliance. This is because the resistive collapsing force of the lungs is no longer present, and so the compliance shifts to reflect just the chest wall. This compliance is greater because the lack of resistive force means that there can be a greater change in volume for a given pressure. Remember, compliance is change in volume over change in pressure. So if you have a greater change in volume, your compliance increases. Thank you for watching the hardest educational video out there. I hope you learned something and don't forget to smash that like button. My prof says that for every like, I get another extra credit point on my exam. Special thanks to my mom's yoga mat for acting as a green screen.